everyone and welcome to another great episode of Good Morning KU. I'm Brianna Johnson. And I'm Alex Pecorero. And it just so happens, um, coincidentally, that today is National Talk Show Day. So happy National Talk Show Day. Yes, thanks for joining us on this fabulous talk <laughs> show this morning. Um, but how are you? How's it going? I'm doing good. It's been a long couple of weeks, but oh, yeah. I think I'm going to get to sleep this weekend. So Thankfully, <laughs> yes, I am pumped for that. Um, the weather today is kind of putting me in that, like, right. take a nap, do absolutely nothing but Netflix, like Netflix watch and chill. All of the high school musicals and sweatpants yes. and a hoodie. Hulu and hang for a while. <laughs> like, I'm just not wanting to do anything school-related that requires brain power this yes. weekend. I feel you. But hopefully tonight the weather stays, like, like not rainy, like no storms come in so the, for the Royals game. Yes, I was thinking about that earlier. The Royals yeah. have a big <laughs> match tonight. If they win this game, then they go to the World Series. Yes. That's really exciting. If not, they play the Toronto Blue Jays one more time at the K. Um, do you think you're going to watch it? Um, possibly, because my friends are super into it. So their excitement kind of like goes on to me, and I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. okay, yeah. It's like a bonding yeah. kind of thing, yeah. I feel like I wasn't... My family's from Kansas, so they are all pretty big Royals fans, yeah. but I feel like I wasn't really super into it until yeah. I came to KU, and they Pe started doing so well. And, and people get, like, very intense about it, and then mm -hmm. you're like, oh, my gosh, I want to be excited. Yes, and it kind of makes it nice at this time of year, especially that the Royals are doing so well, just because, like, you know, at KU it's not basketball season yet, so everyone's <laughs> like, we have to have a team to cheer for, and so we have the Royals, and so it's exciting that they made it this far. So yeah. Hopefully they can keep going, and hopefully the weather does cooperate, like right? you said. But <laughs> Um, but hopefully, with the Royals game going on, people can still attend a pretty big event in the Union today, Rock Chalk Shabbat's going on. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of a big yearly event for Jewish life that Hillel puts on every year. And o over like 600 people, I think, come to attendance to that event yearly. That's so crazy. Hopefully people can still make it out, um, check the Royals score on their phones or something like that, <laughs> <laughs> and can still be there, um, and can watch the updates and all that stuff that go on. Yeah, but, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. And then also tonight, I know like this weekend and tonight, they, they're going to have a swim and dive meet. Yeah. With, yeah, yeah. Which is going to be cool to go to because I know a lot of people don't go to that stuff. Right. And I I think that they're going to do pretty well personally, mm -hmm. but yeah. Yeah. It's kind of, yeah, it's kind of cool that, um, I mean, basketball gets a lot of hype yeah. and stuff like that. But I mean, all of our other sports teams have been doing really well this year. Like the volleyball team is undefeated. Right. Um, the swim and dive team does pretty well. So I think it's definitely cool that people get to go and support all the other teams and then too, if people go on Saturday know that they want people to wear pink for like breast cancer awareness mm -hmm. month which is exciting yeah because absolutely. the people are like recognizing that and like acknowledging it yeah yeah and I, I really like how a lot of sports teams typically do the pink socks or the pink <laughs> knee pads or what have you um, for breast cancer awareness so yeah that's that's a good point and important too so um, but I think that's all we have for upcoming events and stuff like that for this segment. But stay tuned and we'll be back with Sophia from Andrews Library. Where you go to college makes a statement about you. This place will become a part of you, your identity for life. The University of Kansas, a great place to be you. Welcome back. I'm here with Sophia Leung, who is the Learning Studio Librarian at Anschutz Library. Um, so thank you for coming and talking sure. with us this morning. And I understand you're here to promote an event going on at the library tomorrow. Can you kind of explain what's going on? Sure. Um, so tomorrow is ID8 Lawrence, mm -hmm. um, and it's a uh, local. It's Sorry, it's an ideas challenge about local and regional water issues. Mm -hmm. So teams will be uh, forming tomorrow, and they'll be trying to solve community issues around water. Okay, cool. And so it's happening in Anschutz. What floor? Yeah. It'll be on the fourth floor, um, and it's all day. There'll be mm -hmm. free food. There'll be prizes. Oh, good. Yes. Good incentive. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, and I, we were talking earlier, and you said that people that attend get a cool T-shirt, like you're yes, wearing. Is that correct? Yes, T-shirt. Okay, cool. Um, and people can can they still sign up, or is it yes. too late? No, it's, so you can still sign up all the way until tomorrow morning um, at 10:30. That's the latest that we'll accept new people. So. Okay. And what do you? This is the first time that you guys have put this on, correct? Yes, it's the first time. But we have a lot of great community partners. The Lawrence Public Library is involved, mm -hmm. Biodiversity Institute, and many more. So. Okay. 
Cool, and what do you guys hope to accomplish at this event tomorrow? Um, what we're hoping is that actually some solutions will come out of this. Um, we're hoping that there'll be a lot of collaborative work. We'll get people working together that don't usually uh, talk to one another. Um, there'll be lots of opportunities to interact with local experts. Um, there'll be a lot of opportunities for students to get to know one another. Right. So hoping to bring the community together. Yeah, definitely, for yes. sure. Um, and so kind of off topic a little bit, but here at Media Crossroads, we're getting ready to move actually yes. to Anschutz Library um, at the start of next semester and hopefully get to interact with you a lot while we're there. Mm -hmm. So what exactly is your job at Anschutz? What do you kind of take care of? Sure, so um, the Learning Studio is actually a partnership between the libraries, undergraduate studies, and IT. Mm -hmm. And so um, I'm there to help facilitate those partnerships, but also to bring programming in for undergraduates. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's why we're doing ID8 Lawrence as well. Right, cool. We're really excited to kind of move down to you guys and get a new environment. So hopefully we get to see a lot of you down there. Yeah, we're Maybe happy to see you. Maybe have you back on the show, I'm sure, <laughs> yes. at some point. Um, but thank you so much, Sophia, for coming and talking with us. Make sure you check out ID8 going on tomorrow at Anschutz. Um, but stay tuned, and after the break, we'll be back with Travis and his guest. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to Good Morning KU. I'm Travis Calvin, and I'm here with our guest, Zach Shields from the Peer Leadership Consultants. Zach, thank you for joining us today. Oh, thanks, Travis. All right, so uh, you're from the Peer Leadership Consultants. Uh, do you want to give me a brief rundown about what that is and kind of what PLC's goals are at KU? Mm -hmm, definitely. Uh, thanks for having us on, uh, mm -hmm. first of all. Uh, Peer Leadership Consultants is a group here on campus that exists to facilitate effective leadership, uh, on the part of all people here at KU. We work with students through workshops and different representation opportunities to facilitate um, the best, bring out the best in everyone here at KU. Oh, that's a really so, good goal that you guys have there. Yeah. Uh, how long have you been involved with it uh, personally? Mm -hmm. I've been involved personally for about three years. That's most of the lifespan of the PLCs. So they actually started about five years ago. Mm -hmm. um, a group within the Student Involvement and Leadership Center decided that there needed to be a student component to, to their um, mission. Uh, and so they created the PLCs, and here we are. That's a great goal to have, because yeah. I mean, I mean, it sounds like you guys are having a lot of success. Or it just—it sounds like a really great mm -hmm. idea. Oh yeah. Uh, what kind of services do you offer specifically if you're like trying mm -hmm. to bring out the best in students? Yeah. So, um, in in our work to uh, promote this kind of, of thing, uh, we do several different and different things. We put together workshops for different student organizations on campus mm -hmm. uh, that can reach us at our website and um, so on and so forth. But um, we also work with students one-on-one. -on -one. We do consultations with student leaders here on campus. Um, we represent SILK at different, um, different information fairs around campus. Um, we just try and connect people with the opportunities to grow and develop as leaders. Okay. Well, you, you did mention that website, and I know we have a link to the mm -hmm. website available on one of our lower thirds right there. There it is with the, with the Twitter handle, of course. So in what ways are students able to find your services? Is it through the website? Is it through the Twitter handle? Uh, what is it, where can they find some like mm -hmm. about your guys' information? If you want to get in touch with PLC's Twitter is a great way. Facebook, our Facebook page is super active. Uh, also, if you look on our website, we've got links to all the different applications that you might want to look at doing. Uh, we've got bios on all our different members. Um, it, those are the main ways people can get in touch with us. They're also welcome to come on into the Student Involvement and Leadership Center, um, and from there, um, they should be able to get in touch with us. Okay. Well, Zach, thank you for joining me very much. Uh, right, he's from the us. Peer Leadership Consultants once again. Stay tuned, and we'll be right back after this. Where you go to college makes a statement about you. This place will become a part of you, your identity for life. The University of Kansas, a great place to be you. Welcome back. I am Amaka Nzekwe. 
And I'm Caitlin Ballard, and this is your Friday Good Morning KU News Update. Paul Ryan announced last night that he is running to become the first, the next House Speaker, although Ryan never thought about running for Speaker before he, the three major political factions of the House GOP backed him up. Republicans will vote on a new Speaker next week as outgoing House Speaker John Boehner is scheduled for net to resign next Friday. Freddie Gray's mother, Gloria Darden, attempted suicide on Wednesday night. Darden suffered superficial wounds and doctors said no surgery or stitches were needed. Her son, Gray, died in April after suffering injuries while in police custody. Gray's death caused many protests throughout Baltimore and the nation. The strongest hurricane ever to hit the coast of, Puerto Rico, um, of Mexico is expected to hit later today. Hurricane Patricia is currently at Cat 5 storm and is headed straight to the Pacific coast, including resort town of Puerto Vallarta. Mexican officials have issued a state of emergency. KU Student Senate decided to change all of their official documents to become gender neutral on Wednesday night. Instead of using gender specific pronouns of his and her, the documents will replace them with they, them, or their. Although these pronouns could be seen as grammatical mistakes, the reason for the change is to include more people into Student Senate. October 1st is coming to Lawrence this Saturday. For the first time ever, the event will be at Lawrence Library Civic Plaza, featuring a variety of events, entertainment, and food. For more information and ticket prices, go to downtownlawrence.com and search October 1st, 2015. That's October with a K. The UDK website and paper went pink yesterday in support of breast cancer awareness. Half of the ad revenue of the paper went to benefit local breast cancer research groups. Kansan also tabled at Wesco Beach yesterday and all the money from that went towards the groups as well. Visit Kansan.com for more coverage and content about breast cancer awareness. And that's all for today's news update. After the break, Travis will be here with sports. <laughs> Welcome back to Good Morning KU. I'm Travis Calvin and I'm here with some sports. It's 19 and counting for the women's volleyball team after they swept the Oklahoma Sooners in straight sets Wednesday night 3-0. Sophomore Kelsey Payne led the Jayhawks' na national leading hitting attack, tallying 15 kills while adding four blocks. And reigning AVCA National Player of the Week Anissa Havili contributed another game high in assists with 37. That game is in the past though, and the Jayhawks are now looking at their biggest match of the year, a showdown with the number two Texas Longhorns tonight in Austin. The Longhorns have won the past 22 matches against the number seven Jayhawks, but Kansas should be ready. They've only dropped two sets in all of con conference play this season. First serve is set for 8 p.m. The Kansas swimming and diving teams will kick off their season at the Robinson Auditorium here in Lawrence today. They'll be taking on the Northwest Missouri State Bears and the Denver Pioneers in a two day span. Today's events will begin at 5 p.m. and is open to the public. The women's soccer team will look to bounce back after a tough loss last week against the number three West Virginia Mountaineers, but it won't be getting any easier. Kansas is in Lubbock, Texas today to, in a showdown against the number 21 Texas Tech Red Raiders, who, haven't, who Kansas haven't beaten since 2009. The Jayhawks won't have much time to rest after that. On Sunday, Kansas is poised to take on Oklahoma State in Stillwater at 1 p.m. Kickoff of the Texas Tech game is set for 7.15 p.m. The women's soccer team isn't the only KU squad taking on the Cowboys. Kansas football will be in Stillwater this Saturday trying to snap their 35-game losing skid. It won't, 35-game road losing skid, excuse me. They haven't lost that many times. It won't be easy for Kansas. They'll be taking on the number 12 team in the country there. The road woes in particular have been difficult in Stillwater. The last time Kansas traveled to Boone Piggin Stadium and pulled out a victory was during the Orange Bowl season in 2007. Kickoff is set for 2.30. And last but not least, the series has shifted back to Kansas City for Game 6 of the ALCS. Toronto got the best of Edison Volquez and the Royals in Game 5, coming out on top 7-1. Giordano Ventura is on the mound for the Royals tonight in front of a sellout Coffin Stadium. First pitch is set for 7.07 p.m. That time is pretty precise, but you know what else is precise? Last week's Jayhawks Sports Report MVP of the Week, Ryan Willis. Willis finished with 35 
of 50 against Texas Tech for 330 yards and two touchdowns. For your chance to vote for, the, for Monday's Jayhawk Sports Report MVP of the week, keep an eye on Saturday when I will tweet out the candidates. That's going to do it for sports. Stay tuned, and we'll be right back with some Jimmy Fallon games. Where you go to college makes a statement about you. This place will become a part of you, your identity for life. The University of Kansas, a great place to be you. Welcome back. Um, so it's time for a fun Jimmy Fallon game. Yeah. Alex and I are going <laughs> to challenge each other to a little five second summaries. Um, I've never played this one before, have you? I have not. Okay, so this is going to be interesting. It's going to be fun. Um, <laughs> so the rules are we each have three movies, titles that we chose. Um, and so we have to describe each of them in a certain amount of seconds. Yes. And then try and guess each other's game based <laughs> or movie based off of the summary that we give. So, are you ready? I'm so ready. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready so to win. I, are you sure? I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm feeling a little confident. We'll see. Okay, so I'm going to say my first summary first, okay. and you're going to try and guess. Ready? Okay. So, we got to get our timer set up real quick so we can go. Um, we're letting our timer get going. Okay. Are this is ready? the most important yeah. part. <laughs> it is. It really is. It kind of defines where we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> ready? We good? Yeah. Okay. Fish gets lost in the sea and his dad has to find him. Two Mississippi. Three Mississippi. Mm. Four Mississippi. Can I? <laughs> I know you know Five this. Oh, Finding Nemo. Did, she, did you get it? Yeah. Okay. Good job. Okay. <laughs> good job. Oh, there's our timer. Okay. You got it. Good, good start. Good start to the game. Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. A psycho owns a motel with his dead mom living in his house up the hill. What? <laughs> What was it? It was psycho, and I actually said the word, but... Ah! <laughs> so does that mean that I get points? Because, okay. <laughs> I, please. Because I had no, I've never seen that movie. I have no clue. I want to say crazy. Oh, shoot. Okay, well, now you know. Next time. Next time. Okay, what's my next movie? All right, here we go. I'm pumped. You ready? Okay. Big blue thing and little green thing go to school. <laughs> Can I still guess? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Monsters University? Oh, yeah. Good job. <laughs> I think the easy ones. I thought they'd be a little more difficult than that, but. You okay. should get this next one, so. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. High school basketball player joins musicals. High school musical. <laughs> 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 I think it was in high school musical. Yeah. Do I get points again? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. All right, this next one might be a little trickier only because I have a shorter amount of time to say it. Okay. Well, you can guess it. Everyone has seen this movie, I'm pretty sure. If not, then I apologize, <laughs> but I think you probably know what I'm talking about. Okay, I'm ready. Okay. Ready? It's Drunk in Vegas. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, I don't know. I'll give oh. you a couple more guesses. The Hangover? Yes. Good job. <laughs> Good job. Okay. Okay, what about this one? Do you think I'm going to know what it is? You should. Okay. Yeah, okay. Ready? Okay, you're a wizard. Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> wow, we did pretty good, actually. Yeah. I have to say, for the first time playing it, I think we did fairly well. That's really nerve <laughs> It is, because you're like, oh my gosh, I'm going to feel so dumb if I know the movie, but I just can't think of it. And it's hard to describe them in five or three or one yeah. second when you can't say any of the words. But um, just want to say thank you to our lovely Sam behind the scenes for being our timer. Thank you, Sam. You're awesome. Um, Okay, so kind of to wrap things up, do you have any fun weekend plans that you got going on? Um, well, I'm definitely going to go see the Swim and Dive Me, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I know hopefully I can get someone to take me to a pumpkin patch this weekend yes. to get some kettle corn and pumpkin. Ooh, yes, I, my sorority had a sisterhood event at the pu Shockey's Pumpkin Patch down the way a couple weekends ago, and it was so fun. Right. I feel like I enjoy like pumpkin patches and things like that right. more now that I'm older. I Same, when I was yeah. Younger, like the mazes, I'm like, these are so much fun. Yes, and like the little cardboard things that you can get behind and like take your picture. And then, like I enjoy them so much more now than I did when I was younger, I feel like. But yeah, it's definitely that time of year. Do you have any, um, speaking of Halloween things, do you have any 
Halloween costume ideas for next weekend? Well, I'm hoping to dress up as Tinkerbell with my sister Cute. because Tinkerbell actually has a sister, if people Does don't really? know about that. Yep, because I've I watched all of the cartoon movies. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. Yes. Do you have costumes in mind? I'm still deciding. Okay, funny story about that actually. Yesterday, <laughs> I saw a picture on Instagram of a friend of mine from back home, and her and her friend dressed up as Taco Bell. One of them was dressed as a taco, <laughs> one of them was dressed as Belle from Beauty and the Beast. And it was a real, I thought it was a really clever <laughs> idea. And so I'm trying to convince my roommate to do that with me, but she's really not on board because she doesn't want to be the taco, but I don't want to be the taco. So we're like, mm. but Just carry your taco around with you. Oh, good idea. Maybe I'll do that instead so I can just still be Belle. We both win. That's a good idea. Thank you for the suggestion. But um, thank you, Alex, for playing the game with me no and for problem. hosting. You did an awesome <laughs> job. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Make sure you follow us on our social media, Media Crossroads, on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. Um, but tune in next Monday at 10, and we'll be here. Thank you, guys. Have a good weekend.